Most viewers of this channel will have heard of the Boers and the Zulus, two groups of people in South Africa that Britain has gone to war with over the years. But did you know that these guys also fought against one another for control of huge swathes of South Africa's land? These fights culminated in the Battle of Blood River, a battle that has been covered previously on this show. Hi guys, welcome back to the Redcoat History Podcast and YouTube channel. My name's Chris, I'm the host, and if you do me a favour by liking and subscribing, that will really help this channel to grow and help other people to find it. I think it's super important to bring military history back to life for a new generation, because frankly I feel many of these stories are getting lost. Today, on the show, we're taking a slight detour in that it doesn't necessarily involve any Brits, or at least very, very few, and that's the war between the Zulus and the Boers of 1837 to 1840. To cover it, I'm joined by the amazing Professor John LeBand, who actually has a book out on this very subject that you can get from helion.co.uk. If you're interested in that, you can even get a 20% discount code. Just check the description below. The conflict that we're talking about today began with what's known as the Great Trek. That was when the Dutch-speaking Boers began to migrate from British control. They didn't like British control in the Cape after Britain had taken it over at the end of the Napoleonic Wars. They moved north looking for new lands to farm, new places to settle. But they didn't find an empty felt. Instead, they found a very proud and strong series of peoples, the Basutu, the Baperi, and of course, the Zulus. These were indigenous peoples with a strong warrior ethos and a willingness to protect their land. John picks up the story. Well, I think it's it's important really because that brings, if you like, white settlers in a large in large numbers into the interior of the country. I mean, it's you know it's like the Wild West. I mean, they're they're off on their wagons, they're off with their their slaves and servants, they're 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 off with all their livestock, and they're going to settle the interior of South Africa and bad luck for the indigenous people who live there. They either have to move off or, you know, accept being tenants on, on Boer farms. I mean, that's really the, the, the whole idea. But the problem with the interior that there are a number of really powerful kingdoms. Um, and the Boers, as they move in, um, in, in the high felt, in what's the Northern Orange Free State or you know, the later the Transvaal, they defeat the Indebele kingdom so badly, in fact, it does what these migratory kingdoms do. It actually upsticked and moved the whole way into what is now um, Zimbabwe to Bulawayo, basically. So the whole kingdom moved off out of the way of the Boers. And some Boers stayed there, and that's where they settled in the Transvaal Republic and the Orange Free State. But and what year was that, John? Boers, when did they, when did they yeah, defeat that, the that, Ndebele? That, that, that's 18, 1830, 36, 37. Though those years that that's going on there, so part of the um, part of the um, caravan, if you like, of these um, these fur trekkers in their organised parties with their wagons full of all their household furniture and everything. I mean, they're they're there, they're moving lock, stock, and barrel into new territory away from British rule in the Cape, basically. Um, the the lands on the east of the country, where the Zuda Kingdom is, they're the most fertile. Port Natal is there with some white English settlers, which is a good port. They need a port for their supplies, especially ammunition and so on. Um, so this is really the ideal place to settle. So they just so part part of the Boers, the major 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 part, in fact, decide to move down into what is the Zulu Kingdom. Um, they move down in force, of course, um, and negotiate. But it's you know it's when you negotiate. <laughs> with a rifle, with, with with a musket in your hand, and it's it's really quite another matter. And and the Zulu king and the Zulus simply decided, to listen, these people we can't accept them in our country. I mean, they've they've moved in, they're settling in, they're without our permission, they're demanding all sorts of territorial concessions. We can't accept it. So would this have been first, Dingaan? Was he king at that this, point? This is King Dingaan. Yeah, um, and the first, um, it's when the Boers are negotiating at at Dingaan's great place in, in Gunga Klovo. Dingaan goes in for one of the oldest tricks of the book, and that's your enemy is here, yeah. negotiating, they're having a feast, we'll kill them all, you know. Um, so so Retief's party are all executed, and then Dingaan sends out his armies against the, the Boer encampments, 
closer to the mountains to try and wipe them out. This is all a, a quick sort of coup to destroy this huge threat to his kingdom once and for all. And from there, the war starts. And the, the Boers have some successes. They have some huge failures. I won't go into it. But the Battle of Blood River is the war that is the battle that actually destroys Dingaan's power. And from there, he is forced to retreat, make agreements with the Boers, concede him half his kingdom. And to complicate matters, what finishes Dingaan isn't the Boers, but his own brother Mpande, who um, flees from Dingaan and in alliance with the Boers, destroys Dingaan and sets up a new Zulu kingdom to the north of that. And then when the British arrive, they push the Boers out and make their new arrangements with um, Mpande. So it's a it's a complex story of um, a multi-layered kind of story of all sorts of players coming in and out. The British sending in troops, sending them away, thinking about it, worried about the um, security of the region and all that kind of stuff. You know, so it's 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 a it's a very interesting um, series of encounters with all kinds of cultural differences. Um, the Boers, they've got the Bible on their side. They've got God on their side. They've got the Ten Commandments and the fall of Jericho on their side. You know, the the the, um, the Zulus have very much their own sense of what a Zulu kingdom is about and what a Zulu king owes his people in terms of protecting them and all of that kind of thing. You've got the pretty greedy hun hunter traders um, at Port Natal who keep on changing sides and playing the game as best they can. You know, and the British who keep on coming in to, you know, try and put the lid on trouble that might, in fact, then reap a cuss on the borders of the Cape further south. So, so yeah, it's and a presumably, very complex story. Presumably your book uh, talks about the Battle of Blood River in some detail, does it? Oh, yes, that, 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 that it absolutely does. You know, it, it's, it's um, I mean, one, yeah, I mean, it deals, in fact, with all the battles all the encounters in a lot of detail with, you know, all the politics, all the diplomacy, all the rest of it. But certainly it is a military history as much as anything else of what the Boers are actually doing. So one is looking at Boer military systems, British military systems, um, Zulu military systems, Ndebele military systems, Swazi military systems, because they also come into play at various stages. So we're, we're looking at all these various warring people in the interior of South Africa at this stage, which when the dust settles, the British have, have their colony of Natal, the Boers of their republics, the Orange Free State and, and the Transvaal, and the Zulus still have their kingdom and the Swazis still have their kingdom up to then anyway. So, so yeah, it's a re, whole reconfiguration, if you like, of the interior of South Africa in just a couple of years. And could you argue, is this the beginning of the end of the, of the Zulu empire? Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's the various negotiations which Mpande finally agrees basically on the Tug River Tugela as his southern boundary, the Tugela and the Mzunyati or Buffalo River as his southern boundary, whereas, in fact, the Zulu kings had, under Shaka, gone much, much further south, really incorporating what would have been the rest of the then British colony of Natal. So they've given up half their, their kingdom, if you like, you know, to maintain an independent existence I went until the war of 1879 finally sort of shatters it so it's so it is the end of the story in many ways for the Zulu I mean it's yeah they're on the defense of the, they've got the British as neighbors they've got the Boers as neighbors they're you know, keeping a low profile yeah after that and I know anyone who wants greater detail can can buy your book and read it mm. but a lot of a lot of viewers of this show may find the Battle of Blood River interesting could you give us a yeah. 30 second description of what happened because I think some of the numbers are particularly yeah. interesting of those involved in casualties and that sort of thing yeah yep I mean Boer, Boer, Boer tactics were quite simple which they had discovered in fact in their wars against the Indabeli that if they're caught in the open as they were in some other battles too, the Zulus could surround them, cut them off, and you know, generally sort of destroy them. So, a lager is the idea: a wagon lager forming, well, a circle or a D-shaped, you know, figure as it was actually at at Blood River, um, 
a wagon which is which is a fortified position basically and boers they're fighting under the wheels they're fight they're they're firing between the wagons they're firing from on top of the wagons so you've got this fortified position and you've got the zulu attempt really um to maneuver to try and find a flank that's what they're trying to do they couldn't find one um which meant essentially they were forced into a head-on attack against the lager and simply boer fire all right you're using muskets but you're loading and reloading you've got spare muskets you're being so you're keeping up a very constant rate of fire and the zulus simply were unable to break through this this barrage of fire and once they had given up and began to fall back then the then the boers sallied out on their horses and turned what was a retreat into a rout um and sort of you know, riding among the, the Zulus, breaking them up, um, shooting them in in the actual river called Blood River by the Boers because many of the Zulus were there or sheltering the reeds were shot, you know, and that kind of thing. And the water's pretty stagnant this time of year, so it very easily turned red. You know, so that's... And the the Zulu lost, what? We don't know. A thousand or so. Um, the Boers lost, you know, one wounded. I mean, it's... it's, it's, it's um, you know, it's it's, but that's that's what happens. I mean, at some of the other battles of 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 the war, um, where the Boers been able were able to use lagers, exactly the same sort of thing happened. Where they were caught in the open on the horses by the Zulu, they generally lost. So, you know, that is it. And in fact, Blood River didn't end the war. The 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 Boers carried on. They burnt them going Clovo, and then. They were going raiding after that, and then they were caught in the open by the Zulus and actually defeated and decided, okay, enough's enough. We're pulling back and, and calling an end to this one. So there you have it, guys. The Zulu kingdom was massively shrunk because of this conflict that slowly and gradually came to an end after the Battle of Blood River. After this conflict petered out, both the Zulus and the Boers did maintain some level of autonomy afterwards. That came to an end though as the British Empire began to expand and decided that confederacy was the best way to rule South Africa. In other words, all these states would be incorporated into one nation. Of course, we saw the Anglo-Zulu War of 1879 and the First Anglo-Boer War of 1880-81, both of which have been extensively covered on this channel. So if you're interested, I highly recommend going back and watching those videos. Anyway guys, take care and we'll speak again soon.